Can you just speak comfortably where you're at right yeah. now? Yeah. Well, how, how do you want it? It's really nice in here. Talk a little louder. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another grooming podcast. We're here in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Dog Grooming oh Competition. Oh, my God. It's, it's, North North West. West. It. it's the Northwest, Northwest Grooming North Show. North Show. Welcome to another grooming podcast. I'm Nathan Austin. Hi, guys. Blake Hernandez here. I'm Kathleen Austin. I'm Juan Rivera. And I'm Kat Graney. And hello. We <laughs> are at the Northwest, Northwest Grooming Show in Tacoma, Washington. And we're really excited to interview the one and only Blake Hernandez. The yeah. one and only. The well, one thank and you. Only. There is. <laughs> One Sorry to cut you, you off. But <laughs> no, you're fine. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to see you guys here, my West Coast friends. So, how yeah. let's, let's get it going. Wow. I always like that you say, like, oh, us West Coast people, we got to stick together. That's real. It's it's a real vibe. And, and you know what? Maybe I was indoctrinated into it. You know what I mean? Like, I was told that as West Coast competitors, we have a challenge that no one else understands mm-hmm. financially, yeah. uh, mentally, uh, you know, dogs, like everything about competing from the West Coast is so much harder. And if I'm not there competing, like I want to see someone from the West Coast do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and and so I there are there are, you know, top tier groomers in California that maybe like we're not besties and like would go to dinner together. But like I respect them mm-hmm. and I want to see them succeed. Oh Would you God. go to dinner are with you, us? Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, are you saying you don't want to go to dinner with us? I mean, I tried <laughs> to ask you to dinner literally as you we were setting up. <laughs> you so did, you rude. did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You did ask us to dinner. I'm just messing around. So you had said this is your favorite show. This is my favorite show. Uh, tell us why it's your favorite show. <laughs> so um I love that it's in my time zone mm-hmm. because Real. it doesn't throw me off. Fair. Um, I enjoyed driving. I do a lot of flying and like for me, any opportunity to change it up and drive and have more control and like be more scenic it, about it. I it like is it is the most beautiful drive. It is one of the better drives. Very oh, yeah. super scenic. Yeah. And it, do, it like when you say it's 16 hours or 12 hours, or whatever it is for you, it never feels that much. Like it really did go just by. Uh, it, it was did. 13 hours for us and it seemed like 13 hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well to be fair, Nathan is our driver. We are pillow princesses. Um, but you know, they always, in, they, always they always say Whatever. like, Whatever. we can drive but I, I like want to suffer and drive. You oh, know? No, no, oh no. yeah, we always offer. We're uh, like, we'll it's drive. It's for sure a control thing. Like I 100% don't <laughs> want other people to drive because I would rather kill myself in a car accident yeah. than let someone else kill me in a car accident. Uh, I'd rather. He gets, I'd rather s- he gets car sick really bad. I like to tell people no. I I want I want to drive, and then I'm angry that no, <laughs> I'm the only one driving. You know what? I will <laughs> drive every time, but when you fall asleep for the whole trip, I'm mad. Oh, Ronnie does that shit all the time. I'm mad. Yeah. yeah. Do you fall Stay asleep up during <laughs> I, movies too, yeah. or just that? No, for that. Like driving pat like. When we get there, like I don't even want you there with me anymore. I'm like, you just fucking get the fly fuck out. out. I thought yeah. we were just open together. the door and push him out. <laughs> yeah. Nathan Honestly, makes me entertain him for yeah. 12, 13 Be a part hours. of it. What does that mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cats in the car. <laughs> First of all, I you always want me to take over when it's dark and raining, <laughs> and you both fall asleep. That's true. Wow. Okay, but you drive smoother than Katie drives. Oh, that's such a crock of shit. <laughs> that is such a crock of shit. Katie tur- when Katie turns, she turns like this. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so the car is like... <laughs> So when I up. have when I have really long drives, so like ma- that. I'm sorry, I was lying. I'm so offended. I'm like, Katie's the best driver. <laughs> I feel like you guys almost break up every episode. <laughs> no, I'm just because joking, that babe. was literally like the most offensive thing you could say. Why? Uh, it must have struck a chord. Oh, oh I guess it struck a chord. Oh my because god. The next the, question the is, um, was, um, it was only this last time we're driving a van I don't know, weird. and it was windy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why, and why is it important to you to be a good driver? Yeah. Because I, get car I am sick. a I good get driver. I get like, <laughs> if someone came for my driving, I'd be like, okay. Because <laughs> I've ne- I don't, I've never gotten in a car accident. I didn't smash the back of our Tesla I've with a bow. Several, yeah. Ooh. 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 Does that make me a bad driver or a bad? <laughs> <laughs> but Does that make me a bad driver, though, or a bad boater? No, but also I drive our kids around, so then you're making it sound as though I'm unsafe driving no, our children. No, it's not a safety thing, you guys. You guys. It's not you guys. all the way there. You guys. But it's not a safety thing. It was. A, it makes me sick. Okay. Yeah, but no, you said I was a bad <laughs> His driver. His eyes are scared He now. said smooth driver. 
He said, yeah. Kat's a smoother driver than you. That's He that didn't say bad. True. It makes he me nauseous. He actually did say smoother. Yeah. yeah. He I'm never so said mad. bad. He never said I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still mad. I didn't say you were a bad driver, babe. I am. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I take back the good luck blowjob I gave you this morning. Let's move on. So, no, me and Katie sure went to your answer. house. Yes, you, you did? To my you, home? No. We went, yeah. Yeah, we Bakersfield, went to your home. When we came to the candle shop, we prepped in your, in oh, your studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so he has this cool room, right? That's like a salon. Yeah. yeah. And there was a little dresser. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. With, with, with uh, upside down pineapples <laughs> on it. Uh, That's really funny. Okay, so honestly, <laughs> it's because at one point I had like, I'm, I'm a big pineapple fan, but mm-hmm. that's right side up, right? Mm-hmm. I just like pineapples. I'm a millennial. Like, Gen Z <laughs> does the mushrooms. Millennials do pineapples, and like that. I was, will confirm that. Yeah. That was our decor. No, I have um, pineapples. That's and news mushrooms. to me. Yeah, but they oh, were. That up, was, yeah, that was they our, were, our generation's decor. Was pineapples. But it no, wasn't like, as if oh, this one knob has suddenly turned upside down. <laughs> they were all wait, upside wait, down. Oh, okay, so we're wait. getting to it. We're getting to it. So I had a room that was completely decorated in all pineapple everything. Oh, I remember when you posted about it. Yeah, it was your so guest room. I, yeah. But yeah, and so I d- in San Diego. So. Those were like knobs that I got for it, and then they were like too big for that thing, and I never fixed them. So they are top heavy, and they all turn oh. down because I never fix them. Okay. And honestly, like I hate that thing so much, like I just <laughs> want to throw it out anyway. Like it's a so, cheap little thing that I just like spray painted to be <laughs> yellow, and like it because my salon's bright blue, it kind of looks cute in there. And, like, <laughs> so you're saying you're not a swinger? I'm not a swinger. You know? <laughs> and before we got started, I was actually just saying, like, I feel like the older I get, the less I even, like, think about sex. Like, <laughs> That's a downer. Nathan. <laughs> we were, he was like, yes, this is going to be good. Yeah, you know, it was the last thing written on our thing. And Nathan I've just been dying. I've been di- I, I, I almost brought it up to you several are times. That was, like, the first okay, thing. Actually, Can we ask him about the I'll do two things. First of all, are you guys swingers? Is anyone no. here no. swingers? No. Okay. No. I won't say on the episode, but there is a highly suspected heavy swinger couple in the industry oh, really? that we sometimes see take a lowly stranded singleton to their room. Oh, <gasps> oh my God. Who is it? I'm not going to say it right now. We won't. We won't. We'll cut it. We'll no, cut it. No. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. Off the air. Off gotta know. Air. Gotta know. <laughs> Or if they're out there. No, we point. aren't. <laughs> we, yeah. we would interview. Actually, I do love that. <laughs> you would love interviewing them. Oh, we would no, love yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Oh, yeah. Um, we've we've talked about it before. I don't think we would, like, switch people, but, like, the thought of somebody watching was interesting. Mm-hmm. But I don't think. We're too jealous. We're, mm-hmm. too, we're like, too jealous. We're super. No, but I, so I think in my mind it seems a lot sexier than it would actually be in reality. So. But that, isn't that sex always? Oh well, yeah. It always yeah. seems sexier, and then I'm like, get it off. Me. <laughs> <laughs> get <it>. Post not <laughs> clarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah. That's what I always think, though. I always think like I have this uh, image in my head of like what it would be like, and I just don't think it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the boring kind. Of, the pretty kind is the boring, anyways. I like the like the pretty. Yeah, well, like the pretty sex is like kind of boring. Oh. Oh, you, you like know? a ranch? Yeah, I like the. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been trying to not say as much on the on the hair. <laughs> I would I actually would say, you know, you guys may want to venture away from sex. Like you don't want to be like the sex podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. I mean unless you do. I mean, or just do like two podcasts, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the idea was rated the, X. The idea was just like talking <laughs> as we do in the grooming salon. So a lot of sex comes yeah, up. Yeah, okay. like just I mean doesn't it? Salon talk, I right? I work by myself. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you talk to yourself about sex? <laughs> so Stop. judging, Stop. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about yeah. judging. Sure. Okay, sure. well, yeah, there's, there's a few questions that we have, right? Yeah, so you started judging this year. I started ju- well, in, America. Like the in America. Mi- well, there's like minor leagues and major leagues okay. is kind of how I think of it. And mm-hmm. so like I have judged in the States before, mm-hmm. but always for the small shows mm-hmm. that are not groom team sanctioned. Mm-hmm. And then I've judged outside of the country for groom team sanctioned events. Yeah. So, uh, yes, this is my first year doing Barkley, but mm-hmm. I'm still not allocated to open level, which is where groom team points are mm-hmm. appointed. So. Um, yes, I'm a part of the major league circuit now, which is fun. Mm, yeah, but uh, not doing and and the, no one ever retires and is allowed to do open level. I believe it's for like two or three years. 
Mm -hmm. You you have to judge underclasses and then you It's just because there's you those are the people you were just competing with. Like those are the people you were just friends Mm -hmm. with. So they like don't let you at least Barkley, like they keep you off of that class for two. That makes sense. I didn't realize how long ago or how little bit of time Victor was competing. Because when we came into it, I guess he had just stopped competing, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So um, I've only known him as a judge until I was listening on a podcast oh, about no, him. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. When I started competing, he was he was competing still. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he, I, I love Victor's. Victor is someone that I look up to. People ask me a lot, like if I have um, like idols in the mm-hmm. industry still, and and of course there's you know I like how they do this or I respect that business that Take they a run little bit or of whatever, a little bit of this, but. Um, what I do by traveling the world and being in a different salon every single week, a different mm-hmm. event every single week, the only other person that does that on that scale is Victor. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. did it before me and he did it on a much because lo- he's an FCI judge. And like, so he's been able to do it on a much wider scale. And so I definitely like super look up to Victor. And um, as I find my footing as a judge, I am constantly talking and referring to Victor. Victor and Jay are the two people that I refer to for judging yeah. advice. I respect both of them tremendously. Do you think being on the younger side of the judging panel changes your style or like how you approach judging? So I find that like when I was competing, you know, there were a couple active groups like Contest Groomers Uncensored or Contest Dog Network where questions and topics amongst groomers would come along and how judges judge has been a topic that comes up repeatedly forever, right? And I just notice a certain pattern Mm -hmm. that they weigh their options, and then Mm -hmm. I've learned their tiebreakers over the years. So I want to, and I think that's always true when you come to, you've done it for so long and you've studied it for so long that you have an idea of what it's supposed to look like and how you're supposed to function anyway. but I do like to be a little bit more like Jay, and I don't like to pick apart dogs and rip them apart mm-hmm. in front of everyone just because I can. Right. Um, I know what I like and don't like about it already. I don't need to tear it to, yeah. to, to show you that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I just all the thing that I have to remind myself the most of is when I'm breaking ties, like what mistakes could I fix and what mistakes can I not fix today? Yeah. And that mm-hmm. weighed a lot in my my decisions today. There was someone who did had spectacular symmetry, spectacular finish work, mm-hmm. amazing, but the proportions were all off. The pattern was all off I where think it was I know placed. What you're talking about. And <laughs> so I watched her just in my head go for it because I wanted her to be first and just go yeah. to second mm-hmm. and then third because and then I have first place, which I know I need like 15 minutes to put a finishing touch on. Because right. the finish just was not there. Mm-hmm. But the shape and everything about it just showed me that they knew mm-hmm. how that dog is supposed to be presented. And their finish work just isn't there yet. Right. Um, so, yeah, judges find their style. I think the thing that's hardest to plan is what you become. Some pe- so, like let's say you are a really big winner with like a dandy Dinmont or mm-hmm. an Australian Terrier and it's a more rare breed, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not, not everyone's competing with it. And then you retire and you become a judge and a dandy Dinmont competes underneath of you. One of two things happen. Mm. They are either supportive of seeing that breed done yeah. and lend it favors yeah. subconsciously mm. or they are overly critical because yeah. they used to do it so much better yeah. Yeah. and yeah. so i think and and again i don't think it's a conscious decision no, no, i just no. think that yeah so like i and I, i'll be honest i think i am more critical of poodles right well, that's your breed right and and freestyle like i just i i'll watch the whole class like i'm so into those classes mm-hmm. so much that like I watch every like, because when I go to give you critiques now I'm talking to you about your process because like I'm so into it. Mm-hmm. Whereas like the other classes I I mean I got into open grooming sporting dogs like I love that class I- on some level but like I lost joy in like getting up at, and doing two classes so I had to pick <laughs> like yeah. and uh, so yeah I feel like I am very critical of poodles whereas like with terriers I'm not maybe as nitpicky as other people. But I know a lot of details about Australian Terriers because I used to own one and show one and mm-hmm. compete with one. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. They're fiery little dogs. They're actually more 
livable than most terriers, in my opinion. But Tim Scotty. <laughs> we had a bunch of we had a bunch of Australian terriers that we used to do, and they were all like. They were a psychotic. Was it there was that, that kennel si- that really from Evans? What that really it? really nice kennel? Have you been to their setup? No, no, no. Oh, I don't know the show name. No, that the her la- this woman's last name was Evans. And Does she live with a a bunch of lesbians? No, Is it like a lesbian so. commune? <laughs> so. No, no but she was she one. was like there was like a lesbian commune. There was like four lesbians that lived wow. together and raised Australian and terriers, Australian and Australian. it was wow. the most gorgeous setup I've ever seen in my oh, life. No, like no. definitely not. Yeah. What? She's really nice. <laughs> she this woman was really nice, but she just had like a million Australian terriers, and she would leave them all day. And they all wanted, and they to would kill each all want to ch- kill each other. They would all shit in the kennels and stomp oh, in just, it. That's I a think bad. She's that's just, just a bad. Kennel. I think there were kennel just, dogs. Yeah, yeah. I, like I just think she was overwhelmed. She was yeah. an older lady, and yeah. I've seen that happen with any you know Havanese. I've seen like that yeah. because yeah. they just get too many, and yeah. so they just get kennel. She crazy. was super nice. Do you, lady, though. do you when when judging entry, do you put profile or finish? I'll, I'll tell you right now. Uh, it's profile first. Balance is technically second, but it's very tied with symmetry. Mm-hmm. But balance does come before symmetry. Uh, degree of difficulty, which could be your trim, mm. your technique, or the amount of hair under your table. Mm-hmm. And then it is finish work. Mm. If if you get to the end of that and you find yourself breaking ties, then I'll start with my breaking ties in your prep and sanitary areas, Mm -hmm. and if I have to keep going, I will break ties in what I could fix in five minutes. Mm -hmm. If I can Mm -hmm. fix it in five minutes, then I'm gonna put you up over the person that maybe I need to let it grow back in order to fix it. Makes sense. This is probably valuable to a lot of, Oh yeah, we get a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm I'm just starting to compete. Like Our podcast is motivating a lot of people. I would say that this is not some formula I made up. This is a formula that I have learned as a competitor and has only been reinstilled in me conferring at the judges booth. Mm -hmm. Are there judges that are judges? Are there mistakes that you see like over and over and over again that you're like, why is everyone making the same mistake? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, like, what's super common in like poodles? You've been judging poodles, entry poodles. So like, what's something that's like the most common thing I see all the time? I see an open level, <laughs> okay. uh, just like uh, repeatedly too. Like, uh-huh. and that is where, <laughs> <I'm not fine>. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> um, but where you know, for where the underline is supposed to come through the front legs and into the chest piece. Right. Mm-hmm. And it looks good until you pick up the dog's front leg mm-hmm. and then oh, you yeah, can yeah. see where it's disconnected mm-hmm. and it's full too full through that area. Mm-hmm. Um, all the time. Literally all the time. See it all the time. Underlines are too heavy all of the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. Uh, and like Pound it into my brain. No boob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you say, no boob. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I always think that. Well, that's when a I'm topic. Trimming, and I'm like, yeah, no, well, speaking we, of that. No we have boob. all of our, we're all, 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 we're we all trained by the same answer. people. Yeah, I yeah, was just yeah. from a generation before, before you guys, which is so awkward. Because <laughs> 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 I think you're younger than all of us. <laughs> Am I? I think so. How old oh, are you? man, I was getting it. Yeah. Then. Um, so I'm 33. Two, oh. but I'll yeah. three this yeah. year. Yeah, thirty six. Thirty six. Oh my God, good job, Blake. Uh, wait. Yeah, nice yeah. job, Blake. She's a queen. K- oh Katie has to think about it. I'm trying to think GFC. about it. I think I'm thirty four, right? Thirty four. You're eighty nine. Like Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Swifty. But uh, so when I was in San Francisco, I w- had just started learning, uh, just started grooming, and I went to a seminar, and I didn't know Ann Martin. I just are you reading my thing? No. I told him not to read them. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> so I went to a seminar, and it was actually a creative seminar for Lori Craig that was being oh. held at Ann Martin. I heard about Shop. that one. Oh. And so I went to it, and they set, and it, like I got to borrow Gretchen, which is Rapunzel's grandmother, mm-hmm. and oh, wow. we put her in an entire creative theme together, Lori, Ann, and I. And nice. we all worked and together. creative? All day. We did all day. We wow. put this dog from a German to a full-on creative competitive design. Wow. And then it for like six months, I had to ma- maintain it. So that, that is I almost unbelievable. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But that's how I met Anne. And that's how I started taking private lessons with Anne. And she had two employees and a student. So it was uh, Daniel, Danny, uh, Tony, which was a female, and Kath. Cat and I know you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kathleen. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Kathleen Schultz. So the four of us, we used to do actually exactly what you guys were doing. We would like rent a fifteen passenger van and we'd drive up to Northwest together and we'd share each other's dogs. 
coming back from a show with Tony one time, I remember her cocker was shitting every 30 <laughs> minutes. So driving Cockers all, do be shitting. So yeah, driving all do. the way back from the show, we were taking off every 30 minutes we were coming off and letting this dog just like violently diarrhea. Oh nice. But like we but we didn't like make it official. Like we weren't like Feldspar team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. we were. We were the predecessor yeah. Feldspar team because we would compete together and take lessons. The doors together. you open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If she she can definitely light the fire on in somebody. Yeah. So I, she like I I was raised by women like her. I don't have any father figures, any male figures to look up to. I have a bunch of strong females in my family. Yeah, me too. And bullheaded women are only like that because they care about you. They wouldn't yeah. even open their mouth. Yeah. If they didn't care. And if you remember that, then it's like whatever. I heard someone told told me that about Pina because she's responded to me or something, but it was kind of short. Mm. And I was talking, and they're like, "Well, if Pina didn't like you, she wouldn't have responded at all." No. Yeah. So it looks like, you know, <laughs> so she, like, she oh, only is gonna you. respond to you. There's a lot can. of, but there are a lot of bullheaded women <laughs> mm -hmm. in this industry because you got to be a strong person who deal with some strong dogs sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And a hard competition ring, and I, I've just learned that when they're curt with you, they're short with you, and they're, you know, maybe abrasive with you. If they're talking to you at all, it is because they have an opinion in order to help you. They're not. Yeah. yeah. You know. She would do this thing where she would be like talking about poodles and movement, you know? Mm -hmm. She'd be like, oh, it's like a stallion and the way it moves, it was so beautiful. It'll bring tears to your eye. And I'm just listening, like, oh like my <laughs> God, I want a poodle. And, then and that's, how, that's how we ended up with Helios. Well, every time I teach and I talk about poodle chess, like I find myself doing like the ant. The ant thing. The ant, yeah. the ant. Like I'm always the doing the carriage. That thing. Yeah. Yeah, the the movement. Movement. Well, that's the, yes. that's the thing is I want to like instill that same the that fire same I got. That I want to be able love. to do that. Yeah. That passion well, for I think that's, the breed. I think that is something that is evident in what we are doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't. Th I I think, y you know, maybe you're newer on the influencer, you know, yeah. circuit thingy, and it, I know how it feels to not be able to like say it, mm -hmm. but I can say it. I know that like what we do is not just for us, and I don't have to be in an airport every weekend, and yeah. I do it because. I mean, I, I literally, sometimes I get upset when I go to a salon and they don't use my time efficiently. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I just, I thought you guys needed help and you're treating it like you don't. And I don't, yeah. like, like, I want to help. And mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I do feel like, because we started teaching, mm -hmm. me and Katie, and when we go places, I instant, I want to make sure that the time is valuable. Yeah. Right, like that they're they getting their money's worth. It. Mm -hmm. But it's not just a business money's no, worth no, thing. No. I just genuinely, like, I, I feel like you guys you guys brought me here and it's a hassle and it's right. an expense and I just feel like you, I want you to use it. You want to make sure that they get mm -hmm. the learning that they're and the help putting the time in. I will meet you on any level of education. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not that like you have to be a certain, I actually, I don't know if you guys saw in the educator group, but like I just had a private lesson with a poodle owner. They just, nice. they just groomed their own dog and mm -hmm. they saw that, uh, you know, cause they're in poodle groups. So they saw someone take a lesson to me, they reached out, they paid me and, we had a poodle. Lesson. Good for them. Nice. Right on. Yeah. That's Speaking awesome. of travel, how do you plan like your year out? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> and your travel, like mm -hmm. yeah, how do you how do you go about it? Tips, tricks. I mean, it's a twenty five hundred dollar consulting fee for me to. He's all. So I mean, it's not a science. I will say things yeah, yeah. that help me is that you know like stick to a hotel line, stick to an airline provider. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's like the biggest thing I think is in a, not being uh, nickel and dimed for things along the way. Like mm -hmm. I don't pay for bags. I don't pay for, you know, my better seats. I get first class almost all the time because I'm a premier platinum member. I'll be one K actually very soon. Nice. Lucky what airline? What airline? Okay, yeah, what Are you a Delta okay. queen? No, he's no, United. He's United. Oh, okay. I'm United. He's United. But United. But he's going to help us buy our match. New Zealand. Okay. If someone's taking a class with you, do you consider them your student? And if they are, are they always your student? Uh, no, no, no. If someone took, like, a demo class for me, I definitely wouldn't, like, just think of them as my student. Um, uh, and I kind of like that idea. It's kind of, like, roman not romantic in like, a <laughs> weird way, but, like, it's kind of cool. It's a little weird. Well, no. You have <laughs> you know thousands what? I think, of so students I think, <laughs> out there. Million. Well, so um, <laughs> I, I would say that the, uh, it's a little bit like uh, having a drag mom or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wouldn't think that like giving a tip to another drag girl like makes her my drag daughter right you right. have to be yeah. a part of like them building their persona right. that and makes so sense, like yeah. 
I would need to spend a few hands on with them to feel like I ha- it really imparted my style into their style. Yeah. Um, not just a bunch of facts that help them increase theirs, but really help them adopt my style. That makes which sense. is kind of where a drag family would be. Like they have like a certain energy about the house. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got I, I got a question. I just thought of it. Sure. But do you ever get somebody and you're training them and they just like already know everything or or think they, they think they already know everything, and they're being really like, a good, like um, don't want to listen. No, I would say in like individual hands on or group hands on. No, not really. Uh, not specifically. Uh, no. <laughs> in a group hands on one time, I have had people. I feel like shut down and ignore me and oh, like defensively like block their groom from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and make me feel like I wasn't welcome to help them anymore mm. right. um, or help them as much. So I've had that happen, but I usually don't think it's a me problem. I think it's a them oh, yeah. shutting down for whatever reason. They they chopped off the elbow. Now they can't look at anything except for the missing elbow and not just work on everything else. Mm-hmm. And so I've had that happen. The know-it-alls are most common in demo classes, though. They, uh, you're doing a demo, and they an- raise their hand, and you call on them, and they start telling a story. Ugh. <laughs> and so <laughs> and it's because the they know everything. <laughs> the first class we went to, I'm not going to say who was teaching it because I don't remember, <laughs> but <laughs> Anne was, I remember Anne always taught so us it was the Anne. bones. Oh. She taught us the bones, right? No. And um, the pin bone is the I- ilium. Ish- right? Ishium. The ilium. Ilium. Ishium. 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 I do know who it is, but I'm not going to say it. So I'm in this class, and I'm like, (laughs) 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 my teacher is so smart. She taught me all the bones, right? And I'm like, that's not really what I was thinking. I just wanted some He wanted to clarify that it was the same bone. And I'm like, is this the ilium? No, the issue on my own. I don't even know now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm going to tell you how. I L is ilium. See, that's what I always tell him. That's what I always tell him. It's alphabetical. Alphabetical. But he's dyslexic, so it doesn't matter. Every time somebody, (laughs) but every time somebody says I'm wrong, it just reinforces. (laughs) <laughs> the, the, the like bad oh yeah, my the god so wait hold on our daughter is the I same go, way so it's definitely a dyslexic <laughs> thing because she's go, the same way is this the ilium the ischium <laughs> oh my, see what I'm saying oh my god <laughs> is this the is, do you mean this the ischium is that what you're talking about and he's they're like I don't know well, and, la- and, and um, then we were like, oh, my God, they're going to hate us for forever because yeah. we just made them look hella stupid. <laughs> but they don't hate us. They don't hate us. No, they don't. <laughs> well, they forgot. They I don't think, <laughs> I don't yeah, think they thought about it. Your mullet was much smaller then. <laughs> yeah. There was no this mullet. mullet was no only mullet. a year, not even a year old. Yeah, that mullet was not <laughs> even a this thing. This is only a year old. Yeah. Oh, yeah? You're girly. <laughs> <laughs> and there's my hair that I can't grow. We're going to have a hair fight right now. Yeah, I will say your hair. I like. The, I think your hair is nicer than mine. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. My hair is thick, though, like horse hair. Yeah. Wonderful. That's a gr- I don't I know if it's a that. good thing, <laughs> but it, I mean, he's all. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Mine's for you. soft and supple. Yours is. Hair. Hey. When, Kate, when hair. Katie, hair. when Katie cuts it, she shaves the side like she oh gets hair God. splinters from no, it. No, it's worse than terriers. It's so bad. My hands beg to differ. It's oh, okay. thick. And you, cause you say it's because you're Asian. Yeah. Is that why? What yeah, kind of big. Asian? Filipino. Filipino. Oh, okay. Do you do you know any like Tagalog or anything? No. I know no, how to curse some things. <laughs> he's I actually did a a, a Filipino martial arts sikaran oh. for many oh, years. Oh really? Yeah, That's yeah. fucking cool. Okay, <laughs> so he never got to meet because he had his grandpa was Filipino uh-huh. and he never got to meet him. So mm. he's very Why unfortunately. Are you, are you Filipino? Mm-hmm. No. Oh. Oh, well, you said you're of the world, oh, right? Yeah, like I'm of the world, but no Asian descent. No, no Asian? No. What descent? Uh, Greek, Indian, Native American, mm. Italian. No. Yeah. Good mix. Stuff like Very that. Very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> it helps. I just like the melanin. Like yeah. it's, it's yeah. a good amount. I did the 23 nine. Bangs. <laughs> and like Bangs. the whole <laughs> <laughs> I did the, 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 the 23 and me and like the whole thing lights up. Oh really? I never did that. I, I just I don't want to be responsible for like my cousin getting locked up because he did a crime. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Nathan's cousin. I think it only be you. I think it only be you that locked locked up. <laughs> No, I'm good. They're I'm like, clear. we got him. Nathan's <laughs> cousins already got locked up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just add more time. <laughs> well, my color wheel was like all one color. Well, no, don't they? Ta- didn't they take <laughs> <White>. your DNA? <laughs> White. <laughs> <laughs> White. <laughs> when you go to jail, Irish. don't they take they your Irish? DNA now anyways? People think she looks Asian, though. I get a lot of Asian. 
I think you look Irish. <laughs> they did, though, take my DNA when I got in trouble. Yeah, I was going to say, so they already had it. I, had a, I, had well, see, um, I didn't get in trouble, guys. I don't know why you're assuming <laughs> that I got in trouble. No, like, we're not. <laughs> no, I was saying because you were saying oh, I they don't. have yours already. They, they have already my DNA had already. it, so it didn't you matter do to do the 23. So they were That's like, my point. It. They <laughs> were, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the fucking guard comes in and is like, we're taking your DNA. And I was like, whoa, I don't want that, right? And they're like, well, you've done this, so you have to get it done. You did the crime. He's like, don't worry. We're just making sure, we're, we're just proving that you've never <laughs> raped anyone. And I was like, all right, I guess. <laughs> like, I can't argue with that, I guess. Yeah. You should be like, like please, go ahead. Yeah. Take yeah. everything you need. Then you're like, oh, okay, take <laughs> it. Yes, thank yes. you. I am innocent. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway. <laughs> well, um, so we did have a couple of people that sent in questions oh, okay. that we thought would be things that you could help us answer, seeing that you are an AKC NDGAA certifier. Whoop, whoop. Yes, I am. Yeah, and so, uh, and that's pretty cool. You're gonna help teach Nathan. Yay, Yay for me! So I'm gonna read one, <laughs> and I'll have Is that the I'll have. To teach? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's good. <gasps> Actually, <gasps> he's really good to teach. It's just that he doesn't always get he's his not words a, right. Well, he's but not he's, good at retaining sometimes. He's really. Uh, he actually listens really well. Mm -hmm. and he and he takes criticism really well. Awesome. So that's from my so wife, so that means something. There yeah, there <laughs> it's got to be true. Well, you know he'll never mention my driving again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. uh, I really I, It was actually me. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> I, it popped into my head too. <laughs> anyway, uh, but we'll read them both, okay. and then to the best of your ability, obviously. Sure. Um, so this person it says, "Hi everyone, my name is Meg Caroline, and I have a question about furthering my education. I'm 21 years old, and I started my own business June 2023." Yay. I've been very successful with my business, but I know that I want to continue to learn. And thank you. It goes for forever if you leave it. Uh, I want to continue to learn and grow in the future. My question is, how much should I expect to need financially in order to work towards um, attaining certification for grooming? Money is tight with having just started a business, but I still want to start thinking and planning for my future as a dog groomer. Thank you guys so much for the encouragement through your podcast and for making me laugh while grooming dogs. I truly look forward to working while I'm listening to you all. It's that that makes me happy. Yeah. And, that stuff, mm -hmm. and then good. we have one more. And this is from Destiny Showalter. Hello, my name is Destiny. I'm 25 and I've been grooming for about four and a half years now. I wanted to know what your experiences were doing the master grooming certification and everything that goes into it. Where to get started. Absolutely love you guys and your show. Thank you in advance. I just I know a lot of things have changed. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of things. Some yeah. things have changed, um, including like pricing. Um, and then I don't know. I'm sure you know, and this is something we've discussed in previous episodes. Like, I don't know if they've changed the written tests at all or if they're the same as when we took them. And are they the same thing now or are they just still two separate and two Well, separate AKC is separate, right? So okay. let's, I'll let's let you yeah, get yeah, into yeah, yeah. it. I was like, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm ready to ask this all time, So, you've got first, the spiel down. Yeah, first and foremost, uh, I, I will do it from an inspirational side. You never see someone pick up an orange and shove the whole thing in their mouth, right? You peel the orange. I don't know. You break it I've up, actually <laughs> just you break did it that, up so. in wedges. <laughs> you take the wedges in bites. And so, like, if I told you it's $1,500 at least for both certifications, like, mm -hmm. it's going to be scary. Right. Yeah. right. But I'm not saying shell out $3,000 today. I'm saying pay $30 for the safety test, mm -hmm. you know, pay fifty dollars at a show to do your practical exam mm -hmm. you know pay uh 150 dollars for that seminar and it's just little bites along the way i have i've been doing the certification for a year now and i have actually ha helped multiple people finish a certification after 10 years wow so you, wow. you just do it as you can do it is where should they start the, uh, okay so ndg or so i i would i would say start like the the, the a simple answer is to say start at AKC. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you know how to prep and finish all coat types, then I think that it's okay to just start on NDGAA. The AKC one is curly, drop, wire, and jacketed, which refers to your sporting coats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are your four practical exams. There's a safety exam that's, I believe, 15 questions in the beginning. And then there's a pet grooming written at the end, which I believe is 30 questions, and it's very basic. Um, the practicals are pass or fail, and they are, um, and that's it. And it's, it's definitely easier. We are looking at your prep work and your finish work. Mm -hmm. So if you have a drop coat that's a half inch all over, that's okay. If you have a doodle that has a wire coat that pulls, 
that's okay. Hmm. We just need to see that you know how to do the coat type prepped perf- properly and finished with the correct technique and properly. Um, is it easier to do it on like, like, like say you're doing a wire terrier, is it easier to maybe pull like a border than mm-hmm. to pull a Westie so that you don't put holes in it or something? Probably, Probably. because what we're just looking at is your prep and finish. We're not mm-hmm. looking at that breed profile yet. Yeah. Mm. So uh, it, I would say it's definitely easier. It's more accessible because it doesn't have to be a purebred. It doesn't have to be a show trim. It just has to be prep and finish work for the the type. Oh, I but for that. wire, it does need to be pulled, correct? It has to be and pulled. And for sporting, it, it has, has to, to be, be carded. carded. Yes. I think that's kind of cool, though, because... Right, you could have four doodles. Right. You got a curly doodle, a drop doodle, a wire doodle, and a spaniel doodle. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you can do them all. Yeah. And then you can get your AKC Masters. Which one's more of a flex? A, I think it's. I think the AKC Masters is a big flex because anyone off the streets knows what the American Kennel Club is. Mm-hmm. They've yeah. heard of Westminster and they recognize that. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. for a business and for the everyday pet groomer, that's the flex. Mm-hmm. National Dog Groomers Association is the professional flex. That's where we, you've proven you flex that on each other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like I, I would see your clients responding to the AKC Masters far above. Like if you said that you had a coat type Masters and a breed type Masters, they wouldn't even understand what breed type meant. Right. So absolutely. Like, and you certify for both of them, right? I do. Especially and I when was, you was the first certifier for six months only certifying both programs. Right. Yay. And you can do them both at the same time. You can if you're doing, say, a Bichon. That would work for your non-sporting NDGA and your curly coated, right? But like, mm-hmm. let's say you're doing a miniature Schnauzer for NDGAA, right? You can clip those, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it won't count towards your hand strip for Absolutely. wire AKC. So y- it's possible, uh, but you know, we don't. It's not common to compete with drop coats, right? So yeah. like, if you're gonna do the drop coat, you're gonna have I to like bring a spare. So uh, no, I did mine with my rescue. I did oh, a rescue yeah, dog for rescue so round. You end up with a drop in rescue. Well, and sh- it was like a little Shih Tzu mix, and she had like no hair to begin with. I think with. that's yeah. how I, I did my curly and my drop. Yeah. yeah so I, I do feel like the it'd AKC be good. is supposed to be more accessible. Period. Right. But in general, the 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 buyout was in an effort to make NDGAA more accessible. Previous I think it is though. Previous to this year or last year. You basically could only test at the twelve certifiers home location. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so, so now yeah. you can test at certifier locations, at trade shows, mm-hmm. and at any private event that a certifier chooses to allow mm-hmm. testing at. Nice. Like right. the so one we're like, gonna do. Right. <laughs> yep. There you go. In Bakersfield. Yeah. In Bakersfield, June eighth, ninth, and tenth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Creative and freestyle on eighth. Yeah. Breed type on ninth and mm-hmm. certifications on the tenth. Well, yeah. today I saw someone over at the booth over here just with, a, with a little sign that said "Don't disturb." Testing. Yeah. Do yeah. not yeah. disturb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I think that that is really cool because I mean, like you said, right? Twelve locations previously, and, and so it was like if you happen. I mean, we were lucky, right? Because when we looked, our certifier was two hours away. But like, if it had been another state away, I don't know that I would have done it. Yeah. I alone will have certified at 30 different locations which is fantastic just wow me. Yay. i mean we have 50 states here so yeah. being able to make it so much more accessible is gonna help because to me right like we're elevating we're elevating groomers and the more we can elevate groomers the more we elevate the industry as a whole the more the more it's, we can take care of the dogs in our care it's always one groomer the one salon know, at a time remember? yeah and uh, so it, i just think it's super important in the beginning people were like oh i i'm a uh old school NDG, a double A master groomer. So it like means more. And I'm like, the things are the same. Right? Oh, okay. So the written test has not changed significantly. There's some issues with it. Uh, there's some typos, like there, yeah. there's some things that need to be the changed. Like, the like can or can't or can you? I don't. Stuff. Yeah, that's a little weird. Can you, would you? Well, yes, should there you? should you <laughs> and should, should you, you or, or would or could, could you? you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, cool story. Uh, we're now, AKC is working with a, accreditation that works through the colleges. Mm-hmm. Um, so, they don't own it, but, you know, they use them as a source. And through that, is we Is that the met one they bought through WPA? Or is that something else? That's something else. Okay. Um, so, uh, with that, this there's a woman that it's actually her job to write tests. Oh. Like, that's mm. what she does for a living is, like, looks at tests, looks at test scores, look at what questions are consistently being missed. Mm-hmm. Why is it the wording? Is it like 
and 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 so we'll see. What them an right interesting here. job! I know. Yeah. So we'll Sounds see the, crappy. The, the, we'll see, <laughs> no, see, I think that's I super think it's interesting. Cool. I think it's cool too. Mm-hmm. Fun, but I yeah. think it's cool. We don't like to read. I, yeah. I, I just think it's interesting. Reading like, yes. I would like to see what questions <laughs> what are consistently being, being missed, missed and why. And why. Yeah, yeah. That to me seems super interesting. Interesting, yeah. You know, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, what I'm interested in is why AKC is doing all this stuff for groomers now. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think and I want to like who's the who's the like driving force, the driving behind, force behind all I this. I think that it's another thing that you can really thank Barkley for. I mean, Barkley has curated a relationship with Mark Dunn, which is a top person in the AKC, and that relationship has resulted in uh, you know lifetime achievement awards and and sponsorships mm-hmm. that have really connected the two. Mm-hmm. And I think it just put a spotlight in. Okay, like I mean, everything's a business, so like of yeah. course they're of like course. oh. Let's get involved with groomers. There's some more money there. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, guys, but like, let's right. also remember well, that's realistic. We, n- we, we now have a company that has money that yeah. when legislation comes around and fights against us, we have a legitimate, reputable household name with money mm-hmm. that can mm-hmm. stand up for us for the first time ever. And we can well, help no, each well, other. We have the California Groomers Association, too. Like but but there's, a, and, 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 and they fight for us. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it is, it is, and I love Terry. I've been a part of that the whole time. And right. I love, but th- what I'm saying, the difference is the money, guys. Yeah. Right. The it difference is, is huge. California Professional Pet Groomers Association is not going to throw down a hundred thousand dollars to fight yeah. something you know half a million it, that's not happening i've but always akc has that ability if it ever came if to we it. need it I, yeah i've always thought that if akc because it's on the, a sport that's on the decline mm-hmm. dog showing i always thought tapping into the grooming world was uh, a, super a, smart a super good idea and that's what they should be doing because yeah. We can. Or I think it's mutually beneficial because I think groomers can help revitalize AKC confirmation and vice versa. I think they can help us as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it is funny to see like the the like sometimes older older breeders are like mad at groomers and like bickering All back and feuding. forth. It's like it's, I never <laughs> yes. get involved, but it's They're just, just jealous. It's, it, yeah, it's just. You know, yeah. funny. <laughs> it's funny. I, it's all you know, and and even like between contests and and show people, like I I do a kennel of I do I still groom two kennels of poodles, mm-hmm. and one kennel, I like groom the dog for a, literally a specialty. Like it was the Palm Springs non sporting specialty. I groom this dog for it, and she was so mad at me, and she was like, "They don't groom them like this for dog shows. Like this is way too tight. It's like a grooming competition." Like she just kept telling me it was wrong, and this is a friend of mine. We weren't like fighting, but she was mad about this groom. Do you think there's a difference? And then the dog won. Uh, Right on. Like you're like you're welcome. Like the whole thing. You're like take that. Stop talking to me. Like I don't know (laughs) what I'm talking about. Do you think dogs in the show ring and in the grooming ring should be groomed the same? Yes. Yes, they should. Right on. I think so. I think so. But are they? they No, they aren't. Yeah. 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 And I think it it goes both ways, though. Mm -hmm. There are breed standard things that are not being held to the standard that they should be here. Mm And there are grooming basics that are being ignored in dog show. Oh, well, oh, for yes. sure. <laughs> it, it 100% I, um, goes both ways. I uh, How heard that Sean's just recently. Show that are yellow. Yeah. yeah. I heard just <laughs> recently, like, is when the caliber of dogs in, dog in grooming competition has really gotten better. Uh, like I before think it has gotten better, but I don't think it's been super recent. I think yeah. that the, the dogs have been pretty nice for the last, like, five years, I'd yeah. say. But they've been pretty nice. Well, yeah, okay. When he says, I mean, when he says recently, that's... I think of, like, started. 90s We've and 2000 as, like, like, the older... deep in this for, like, the past five, six years. So. Yeah, yeah. I'd say the dogs have been, consi- like, consistently in order to hold your own and open. They've It's been pretty evident that you need, like, a really nice dog yeah. in that class. But, I mean, we learned from Anne, and you remember Anne, I mean, tells us that it was a pet grooming competition before. It mm-hmm. was like she mm-hmm. would have the one nice dog, and someone else would have a really nice dog, and the rest of them were like clip down, hack job, teddy bear traps. Well, like, what she know. told us, right, is like when we were there, is like if you want to really succeed, you have to own the dog and care for it and grow its hair. And like, Okay, something that we thought would be like a super cool thing to do at a contest at some like someday i don't know if they could ever actually pull this off but i think it'd be really cool is if everybody got random dogs and the judges weren't allowed to see who had what dog and it was like a we, blind a judge. lot of people have talked about this before it's just it's i think not it would be, possible no i know but it would be freaking because cool. it would be cool because we just everyone knows each other's dogs too much well no mm-hmm. but that's why it would no, be random you randomly dogs. Dogs. like Right, but I- even still, like you would, you, people have too much of a style. Like style. if I'd I was, if I was in there and did it, it I, I would do a retro trim. Yeah. Oh. 
Everyone you know would I mean? know it's like, here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's Blake 100%. If I went in there and didn't do a retro trip and someone else did, they would assume that it was mine, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, you know, like there are some. It'd it, still be fun to do, though. And it would be interesting. I, I totally think it would be fun to do. Yeah. I just think that it wouldn't yield the true result of a blind. Mm-hmm. I think that we would know stuff. Yeah. I still think it'd be fun, though. <laughs> okay, we get it. You said it five times it. already. We get I it. I still think it'd be fun, I, um, though. Make that one What do you think about the thing. groom team points? Did I answer the both the AKC and DGAA? Um, well, you went them? over pricing some, and then uh, you did go over... Where to st- Where should they start? Like, people oh, yeah. always say, I like... start AKC. Yeah, he right. said start yeah, AKC. Yeah, yeah. So oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because okay, that right. one's the more the easily more easily attainable. And where could they find the information at? Like, just look it up online? Yeah. Is the website updated now? Yeah, the website's being worked on, actually. I mean, like, right now as we speak it's been being worked on like every day for the last like month they're constantly okay. updating so now you can take a practice exam on there oh, nice. uh, people who are certifying now like it's linked to their email so like they're getting their critique forms in their email they're getting payment links like right to them it's much like it is much more progressive. It was a little uh, rough in the beginning when I, we first started. I, I, like, well, I was the certifier that had though. to drag it across that. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's everyone was mad. I was like, well, Ugh. yeah, that's something we talked about right when it happened, <laughs> right? Because we're like, everybody's so angry, everybody's like upset, and then we're like, like you said, everything's so short lived, mm-hmm. and then we're like, after a time, everybody's gonna you know like okay well this is the way it is now and everybody's just gonna kind of forget you, about it you know what did it for me is is nancy you know nancy Hahn, right mm-hmm. so i was at a dog show and i was talking to her and i was like you know i want it i want to teach people and i always wanted to be a certifier but all this stuff is going on and she was like nathan it's gonna be okay yeah like, she's like just give it some fine. time yeah. Yeah. Just give i love it some nancy time. It's for the best. Sue and Watson took me under her arm during that thing. She oh, like right anyone that said anything, she was like, "Stop!" Like she was on it. Yeah, I love Sue. It's yeah. tough, you know. Like I get, you know, like it's it's hard for things to change, and I, uh, you know, I I get all that stuff. Um, but ultimately, so to sort of reference so many and explain good to those things. that don't know, yeah, yeah. AKC purchased the NDGAA through Barkley, so Barkley bought NDGAA for the trade show, and AKC bought the certification from Barkley. It seemed after like that, everybody right? knew it was AKC before it even happened, before Correct. it was even said. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, which, whatever, the small industry people talk. Mm-hmm. The point is, is that during that time, everyone was just, you know, when someone is a, running a mom and pop business, which is basically what NDGA was, not because it wasn't reputable, but because no, it, was it was a mm-hmm. husband and a wife right. running a business together. When it gets taken over by AKC, there are certain things that have to be scaled in order to fit that business. And so and there time. were things like that that had to change. There was no let's talk to the audience and get their opinion. That wasn't an option legally. It has to be done this way, guys. Yeah. It shouldn't have been done that way at all ever. But like now we can't illegally run this part of the, like this operation, right? So yeah. certain things had to change. And people are just people scared don't to like change. change. And so and and mm-hmm. a lot of the certifiers were you know, some of them were, you know, just kind of retired from their salons already. So they were like, oh, this is my sign to, you know, just move on. So some of them just retired because they were tired of doing it anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of them retired it because they were fi- fighting the fight, wanting everything to stay exactly the same. I came on, and I'll tell you right now, when I got hired as a certifier, there were more than just me that was supposed to be hired on in succession. It was supposed to be like me, and then someone else, and then someone else, and then someone else, and then someone else. There was going to be like five new people, right? Mm -hmm. And they very specifically put me out first. And the reason why is because I have been through the ringer on social media (laughs) enough times that they said, we're going to let you take the heat because we know you can handle it. Yeah, Like, we're going to let everyone get mad at you and let you drag it across so everyone else can can handle it. And then we'll, because the person that was next in line, who eventually didn't do it, um, too weak like just sh- she would have broke like it would have crushed her soul mm-hmm. if there were chat groups private chat groups where that they're just be. like this person shouldn't be alive <laughs> like oh yeah. Yeah. that would yeah. be me I'd be <laughs> like uh. <laughs> well it all worked out for the best right yeah it all, oh, it all yeah, worked yeah, out yeah. well and then you know like something that um you know, going back to what Nathan was saying, where he was, you know, he was like, it's always been a dream of mine to be a certifier. And then, um, you know, he is like, he struggles with the like, am I good enough? Can I look and see what I'm looking no. at? So I, I've been interviewed before, so I can't like change my answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and say oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> that like, 
I just and I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think that people are who they are, mm. and like I have always <laughs> felt good enough, and right on. I don't, I don't feel bad about it. Yeah, my confidence has hurt me from time to time, but it has given me so much more than it has ever taken away from me. And I just like I attribute it to I had a mother that every single day she told me that I was beautiful and I was smart and that everybody else was just jealous. That's what she told me every day. Mm -hmm. So when people get they do their things and they come at me, I just remember that they're so jealous. <laughs> like they're <laughs> so That's jealous is where it a lot of it comes from though. and so i just i i always have felt good when you're like yes i i am ready to be a judge of course would you like to do that class of course i'm ready to do that thing i am i am enough and i've always done that yeah yeah it's good i i feel like i'm in this like weird spot where like i keep thinking like oh i want to start teaching and then all of a sudden i am you know <laughs> and then i'm like oh i think it'd be oh, cool to listen all of a sudden i'm just so it's like it's just but the opportunities come and you either you either have take to em? take it or you like squander well, it. I mean, that's what I always remind me. I mean, like when people were up in arms with me before, I'm like, okay, if a company came up to you and said, "Do you want to make your yeah, own you're not gonna say no. And this is how much we're gonna pay you for it." You were gonna say no. You were really gonna say, "Oh no, I just don't." Th I know you think I'm ready, but I don't think I'm ready. So no, thank you. I don't yeah. think people no. do that, and so it just comes back to jealousy. They were jealous. It wasn't them. Yeah. 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 I am jealous. I was at, no, we were out to dinner <laughs> with. Um, <laughs> Um, Utsumi and um, Mackenzie was there and I was saying like oh you know if I get on if I like point on to groom travel team I don't want to do it right like I want to like succeed in the, or he whatever. was like I don't think I'm ready I don't think I'm ready she was like, she if you like, get the, if points, you get you got, the points you're ready you are ready and I'm like, oh well Duh. Uh, okay <laughs> I guess I'm, okay. yes that makes sense yeah so. it didn't what you said at first didn't make sense at all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it's mine yeah. <laughs> I Unfortunately, he didn't have a mom who told him that he was beautiful and smart every day. It I, 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 one of the reasons why I say that is because I do truly believe that everyone yeah. should do that. Like, I'm, I'm going to start doing I'm that very, to my kids. I'm very I mean, conscious I, of what I say to my nieces yeah. um, and how they talk about themselves around me yeah. and stuff. Yes. Like, I just, I'm very conscious of it. Yeah. And I, I don't, like, literally, I was, like, 25 years old, and I came home to my mother, and she was, like, asleep still. And I was just grabbing something from the house. Like, I was running through town. And she, I like kind of woke her up, and I, but I was leaving. My back was already to her. I was walking out the door, and she's like half asleep. She's like, "Stop!" And I stop. And she's like, "Turn around!" <laughs> and, and I turn around. And she's like, "So pretty." So <laughs> literally, <laughs> like that's so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I gotta do it more to my daughter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do tell I do tell my daughter she's pretty a lot, and I do try to tell her she's smart a lot because she struggles like with dyslexia mm -hmm. and things like that, and so she does have really low self confidence. But I think I want to make it a habit for both of our yeah. kids to do that every day. Well, I try. Katie's brother now lives in, he lives in our AD, uh, ADU. Uh -huh. That we in our, our back, yeah. And um, he'll come in the house sometimes and be like, oh, I suck or I'm ugly. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't say like, that in don't. front of my kids. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you don't beat yourself up in yeah. front of my kids. Yeah, because I don't want them to like, get that habit. He'll tell yeah. my son, like, yeah. oh, you're a loser, like, joking with yeah. him. And I'm like, yeah. don't joke yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Nathan like had to set the hard line. He was, was like, like, we, we build each only other build each other up in this house. We don't break each other down. We uh -huh. don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so why candles? Your candle shop. So, I mean, the quick anecdote is to say that I had a lot of success in dog grooming, and I just wanted something that smelled better. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Fair. But, Fair. Uh, the truth of it is I just had a very, very good year. One year I made a very, very good amount of money, and I wanted to invest it in something. Yeah. And... Um, I went to a, I was very into candles at the time as a customer and I went to a candle pouring facility mm. and we thought that's easy. There, look at them making all this money off of me. Fuck it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. And I did. I, I tried sure. to open a sister store with them or a franchise or something and they weren't interested. So I went into Facebook groups and learned how to make candles in Facebook groups. Nice. Just like I learned like, how to watch this. online school, right? Yeah. Like, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm a millennial. I graduate of YouTube. I can learn anything on YouTube. Yep. So mm -hmm. I learned how to make candles, and I learned or how Reddit. to Reddit business. Yeah. A guy ten years ago on Reddit has exact same problem as you. Like, <laughs> I get, I get that a lot. He's got you. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sorry. 
it's it's Wicked Poor Candle Bar and Bookstore. Mm-hmm. So in oh. the third year, we added a bookstore oh. to the back. So I really wanted to do this show there in Poor Candle. So, but like we need to set something up so we could do that because we have a, this on oh, YouTube well too. Yeah. And I think it'd be really good as like a people. To I see mean, it. we're gonna be at the candle shop. Yeah. Juan and Ronnie unfortunately won't be there, but they're gonna be we'll picking up make a puppy. candles. Yeah, they're they're getting a puppy. puppy. Mm-hmm. Getting a puppy. That's pretty sick though. Puppy. Yeah. yeah, well, puppy's pretty worth missing it, but we'll make candles without you anyways. Fine. <laughs> I'll allow it, I guess. <laughs> I love Maybe I'll candle. bring you one back. Good. I'll yeah. make it smell like I'm me. still so happy I did it. It was, I mean, like, so I, I had a three-year lease. Um, my lease is up in October. Mm-hmm. I'll keep it open through to December, but I want to move to Colorado, so I am going to close <laughs> oh. it up. Oh, oh I close it. Yeah, I'm going to close it up this year. But Why it was, Colorado? Like, so, um, the amount of traveling I do, I need to be in Central. the Denver Somewhere area. Somewhere a little bit more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a big. That's hub. smart. Yeah, yeah. That's really lives smart. In Colorado. Yeah. Okay, but is it going to be a bigger house? My house is big enough. I don't need a bigger. <laughs> house. There's more to clean. Oh, yeah, wow. it's so much okay. house. I uh, guess I only saw the one room when I went to your house. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the smallest room. <laughs> 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 the smallest room. No, it's a it's a. It was a mansion ba- to me. Okay, a, with my <laughs> tiny ass home. It's a four bedroom, <laughs> three bathroom, two story. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was that big. It's just two a lot. Story. of You house. really did make a lot of money that year, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's me and my. It just feel like I, it's it's a big house, and it's just me and my partner, and it's mm-hmm. just like we. Have so many bedrooms and a pineapple right room and a pineapple room. Uh, yeah, it's a groom room and it's actually a cat room too. Like, no. you know, it was a cat, cat room. Yeah, our cat designs, but now we have an outdoor cattery too. So it, like, <laughs> it's either Ooh. in that room or it's in the outdoor cattery. It's never in the house. Like, yeah. Just so did you do cat grooming then? I, the very first animal I groomed was a cat, and oh I God, was a cat so scary. first. Yeah. Ooh. I groomed a cat three times before I groomed a dog. Oh my I God. stopped grooming cats because I cut their nipples too much. Uh, I actually jokingly asked in my cat classes, I am completely in belief that cat nipples regenerate. <laughs> like lizard tails. They come, I, if you cut it off, it's there next time to cut off again. Like it's just always there. To <laughs> what is with That's their nipples? I think they're so. They're just it's like just thin. a scar. It's and just like every a, time it's I'm just like. It's just a scar coming yeah. out. I don't know. I'm like, don't cut the nipples. I don't, and I'm, I'm saying it. And then I do it. And I'm like, I just can't do this. They don't care either. They literally don't care. They know they'll grow back. (laughs) (laughs) It's a some secret. They're like, it's fine. (laughs) 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 Is there anything else you'd like to talk about that you didn't get a chance to? Yeah. What's someone that like something that like no one ever asks you that you're like, oh, I wish they did. Oh my God. What is something that no one ever asks? Wait, are we gonna ask the uh, the one question that we said we're gonna ask everybody? Oh yeah. (laughs) When you wipe, do you sit or stand? (laughs) I stole my question. You sit? Yeah. Okay. We're yeah. sitters. Yeah. Well, Nathan's a stand. He's a stander. I sit or stand sit sometimes. Sit or stand sometimes, uh, depending so on the severity of I the feel situation. Like you, if you're standing, you like spread it more. Yeah, you just you sit. You stand well, because your, you cheeks yeah, your, cheeks your cheeks close. Your cheeks close. Yeah. But so <laughs> I will say Nathan doesn't, when he does it, he has a specific technique. I'm he <laughs> Because otherwise. <laughs> because otherwise oh. your cheeks close. I know my thing. Okay, tell <laughs> okay, us. Go ahead. Okay. It triggered something. <laughs> it did. Okay. <laughs> So, when I clean a bathroom, I was taught as a young child, like, like the only way a bathroom clean is to clean it with bleach. Okay. Clean it with bleach. So, the bleach ruins clothes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, when I was a child, my mother made us clean our bathrooms in our underwear. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And so, like, that was normal. Like, don't ruin your clothes. Clean it in your underwear. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to clean the shower, too. So, then after you're, you do that last, so that you can just use the shower when okay. you're done, right? Yeah. That just was, like, the logical thing that my mother taught me right what and makes sense and it makes yeah. sense yeah. It i'm not saying sense. that you shouldn't not do it i just i never thought about the bathroom process being a sp- specific to someone right. but as an adult the under like i would i lived like i it was just me and my partner so like the underwear were gone like i just was <laughs> yeah i was in like hunched over my toilet <laughs> scrubbing <laughs> it in the nude <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize it was weird until I was like <laughs> 31 years old. Like it was like not long ago when I was like, I like said, oh, I'm gonna, to my boyfriend. I'm like, I'm gonna go clean the bathroom, and I like leave. And when it. I come, no, <laughs> when I come back, I'm wet and my hair's wet. Yeah. And he's like, I thought you were gonna clean the bathroom, and I was like, well, yeah, but then I took a shower because like that's how you do. That's, that's what process. you do. And yeah. so that's when it's somewhere in that conversation <laughs> he realized that I was naked to clean the bathroom <laughs> and that's when it was like 
what are you doing? <laughs> and so I just thought everybody cleaned their bathrooms in the nude. They don't. I thought everyone cleaned their bathrooms in the nude until last year. No. That's no. weird. I've never cleaned the bathroom. That's a good one. That's a good one. That was good. Maybe Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do not clean my bathroom in the nude. In fact, do I don't. Do you ruin clothes? I don't want I to do it shirtless, shirtless sometimes. Because I mess it up all the time. I don't clean, clean my bathroom. bathroom. We have we'll somebody have come inside. clean our house once a week because I don't have time. <sighs> okay, I, I clean it with Clorox wipes. Yeah. I had all of the things until I got a partner yeah. who's home most of the time. So you can fucking Oh, see. <laughs> between, between, between me and Nathan, the salon, the kids, <laughs> the freaking dogs. Like, I just don't have the time. <laughs> How yeah, many dogs do you guys have? Seven. Oh. No, we. No, if you ask puppies. our children, if you ask our children, they'll say we have eleven dogs, oh, but four of them are puppies. Right, right, They're four weeks old. Right, so, right. Uh, yeah, we we have five. So yeah, but in between all the kids' activities and all the, you know, all, oh, all the things, the competitions. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I have I just, The only thing, like the only chore that I do every week is I come home and I do the yard. Like mm -hmm. I, I have mm -hmm. someone who does the front yard for me, but I do the backyard. No. We're on a third of an acre, so it's like yeah. a big. That's a lot. Well, we're gonna have you do the sign out. Um, you have to tell them what the sign out is. Yeah, I, I said I didn't want to do the sign out because I always mess it up, and now you want me to teach someone else <laughs> how to do the sign out. Well, thank you for tuning in to another grooming <laughs> podcast. We'll see you next time. So you do that. Bye. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Yeah. Now, now yeah. your turn. Yeah. yeah. Now you get oh. to do it. <laughs> 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 We're like, we uh, hope you listened. That I was a test. It. I <laughs> did it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching another grooming podcast. See you oh, next time. Right on. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>